Chuck Wendig's Aftermath trilogy brought an official end to the Galactic Civil War, only one year after the Battle of Endor. But in Star Wars Legends, the war continued on for another 15 years. Various warlords competed for control of the Empire throughout that time, and today we'll be talking about all the notable ones. Before talking specifics, let's discuss the title of Warlord. It was originally a rare and distinguished title reserved for only the most elite and brilliant military minds of the Empire. Thrawn was one such man to achieve the rank. But after the death of the Emperor, various would-be rulers proclaimed themselves warlords without having earned the title. Popping up simultaneously, many of them competed with each other, controlling their own territories within Imperial space. Warlord Zinj may have been the most famous warlord of the Empire, and rightfully so, as he had actually earned the rank prior to the Emperor's death. He controlled a great number of star systems in the four years after the Battle of Endor. He was the son of a female Imperial Admiral that was treated unfairly due to her gender. She turned traitor, and her son murdered her after being promised command of his own Victory-class Star Destroyer, the Iron Fist. Zinj himself rose to the rank of not only Admiral, but also Grand Moff and Warlord, and he received a Super Star Destroyer known as Brawl. After the Battle of Endor, he renamed the ship to Iron Fist as well, and rallied more military commanders to his cause. He was a thorn in the side of the New Republic, as well as the failing Empire led by Asan Isard. He was killed in battle above Dathomir by Han Solo, and he died as his mother did, a traitor to the Empire he once served. Moff Kintor Sarn spent his years of Imperial service obsessed with a secret he stumbled upon. By allying himself with a powerful and technologically advanced creature he called the Dark Strider, he was granted access to powerful weapons that could turn almost any engagement he found himself in into a victory. As the New Republic battled Zinj, Sarn caused enough problems that they sent a strike force to his location near Wild Space. He was betrayed in battle and incinerated by his own technology. Delac Krennel was a sadistic, alien-hating admiral from Coralag. His brutality was so extreme that he was assigned to work under Grand Admiral Thrawn in the Unknown Regions to keep him out of Imperial space. Krennel resented his non-human commanding officer, and when he tried to damage some of Thrawn's art collection, the Chiss had Delek's arm cut off as punishment. The loss of his arm didn't slow him down, and he continued to disobey orders until he was recalled to Coruscant for punishment. But in the chaos that followed the Battle of Endor, Krennel fled, claimed the title of Warlord, and went so far as to call himself the Prince Admiral. He was responsible for the death of Sate Pestage during the Imperial Civil War. Krennel was killed in a naval battle with Admiral Akbar. Grand Moff Artis Kane was given control of Grand Moff Tarkin's territories after his death at the Battle of Yavin. He disliked his assignment in the Outer Rim, and when the Emperor was killed, he saw a chance to seize power for himself. Knowing many corporations would fail without Imperial funds, he gathered business leaders and promised financial support in return for their backing. They formed a new faction called the Pentastar Alignment. They gathered power in the Outer Rim, happy to let the other warlords fight over Imperial Center. But Kane was eventually ambushed and killed by the New Republic after they received information on his whereabouts from his rivals. The Pentastar alignment was eventually absorbed into the Imperial Remnant. Before Kane's formation of the Pentastar alignment, a man named Sander Del Vardis was under his command. Del Vardis was also a member of the Tarkin family by marriage. He refused to join Kane's Pentastar alignment and decided to become a warlord and start his own faction called the Iriadu Authority. He invented the title of Superior General and began construction on a Super Star Destroyer for himself. Blitzer Harsk was known to be one of the Empire's top military strategists. He was present for the Battle of Endor, during which he received brain damage. With no clear chain of command, he took his ships to the Deep Core, and while he didn't officially break from the Empire, his actions caused him to become the first Imperial Warlord. His declining mental state made him erratic, and he would attack the other warlords on a whim. Truton Teradoc was a captain assigned to the Crimson Command before the Battle of Endor. He followed Harsk's example and attempted to establish his own warlord kingdom. After the reborn Emperor Palpatine's failed campaign to destroy the New Republic, Teradoc found himself with the largest military of any warlord. 
He began a private war with Harsk that was stopped by Admiral Natasi Dalla, who summoned 13 Imperial warlords to negotiations in hopes they could all set aside their differences and work together. Delvardis, Harsk, Teradoc, and another warlord named Malf Glazu were all present. Unable to reach an agreement, Dalla filled the room with nerve gas and killed them. Enix Devian was known as the personal assassin of Emperor Palpatine. After the Empire's collapse, he named himself Supreme Commander of the Restored Empire. He was a rival of Artis Kane and was the rumored source of the information that allowed for Kane's death. He did his best to play the New Republic and the Imperial Warlords off of each other, hoping they would destroy themselves, but he was killed by a former Imperial Royal Guard named Kir Kanos. Kronal was a man that went by many names. He was born as Peric and served as a prophet of the Dark Side. He eventually became known as Black Hole, the Director of Imperial Intelligence. During that time, he gained the nickname Monster Maker, responsible for creating mutant creatures known as Sith Spawn. He grew paranoid and crazy, so he was exiled to the Outer Rim. He returned as a warlord after the Battle of Endor, taking up the name Shadow Spawn. Using a legion of shadow troopers under his command, he carried out acts of piracy, terrorism, and mass slaughter until he was killed by Luke Skywalker. But he somehow brought himself back to life with the dark side to serve the resurrected Emperor. He lived on as a cyborg until he was killed again by Luke. Admiral Gain Drommel was a student of Grand Moff Tarkin's that was stationed on Coruscant during the Battle of Endor. When news of the Emperor's death reached him, he took his ships back to his homeworld, Aplovis, and declared himself a warlord. Shortly after, he was assassinated by one of his own officers. Moff Foga Brill became a warlord on the planet Prakith, where the Imperial Inquisitors were stationed. He sought only to isolate and defend the planet, which fell into poverty and desperation. He was also murdered by his own subordinates, and Prakith joined the New Republic immediately after. Again, everything covered here today is from Star Wars Legends, but the Aftermath trilogy has allowed for possible Imperial Warlords to still exist. We may see some of these characters return to canon one day. We'll just have to wait and see, but that's it for today. If there are any Warlords you'd like to learn more about, or if you have any ideas for more comprehensive Star Wars lists, let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.